your Indian consumer. Hey consumers, it's me Prasad with Patek, your Indian consumer, back with another video. And today we take a closer look at this dishwasher by Simmons. The model number of the same you can see right now on the screen. And first things first. So let's start with the installation. So this is how the machine looks from the rear end. These are the two pipes, the inlet one and the outlet one. The complete installation process will be taken care of by the Simmons people. And the details regarding the same you will get in the Best Buy link mentioned below in the description. The installation process is fairly very simple. You will just have to add an extra coupling onto your tap as you can see in the video right now. The inlet pipe easily screws onto the coupling as you see there. This dishwasher comes with numerous instruction manuals in various languages but what we are concerned is English. So I'll quickly show you the instruction manual. Like always you can pause the video anytime if you feel like reading the details. Detailed technical information along with complete operational instructions have been mentioned precisely in the manual. Let me now show you how this machine has to be operated. So I've turned on the inlet water supply and after taking care of the outlet pipe, the next thing that we have to do is put in the utensils. But before that, let's talk about the soaps that we'll have to use with this machine. Yes, it does come with its own special soaps. So here I have a finished packet. This bottle here contains the rinseid. And this tablet here is a combination of rinseid, salt and detergent. Now this might seem confusing, right? So let me just simplify this for you. So here are the three things I spoke about. Firstly, let's talk about the rinseid. Now this liquid will be used in the drying and shining process of the utensils. You can see this bottle here, which is a half litre bottle and it is available for around 150 rupees and it will easily last you three months. Next up is the salt. Now this salt will be used in softening the water. So if the water that is supplied at your place is really hard, you will have to check the hardness and depending on that, you will have to use this salt. One kg pack of this salt is available for 100 rupees. This can last you easily six or eight months. You might not even need it if the water is really soft at your place. And the next and the final thing that we have is the detergent. So this one kg pack of detergent is available for 220 rupees and it will be required as per your use. Okay, so those were the three things that you will require to wash your utensils. Now let's see how the process exactly takes place. So the bottom tray here, as you saw, can be easily removed as it sits on wheels which are again nicely designed. Once you have removed the bottom tray, you will have to open this knob here, which is the tank where you will have to put in the salt. So I'm putting the salt right now. So as I've told you earlier, you will have to put in the salt only if the water is really hard at your place. If the hardness of the water is really low, you don't have to worry about it. Once you have put the salt in, you have to close the knob, slide the tray back in and proceed with the rinseid and detergent insertion. So these are the two compartments in which you will have to put the rinseid and the detergent. So the one I opened just now is for the rinseid. This is how it will look from inside. It has a mark for the maximum level. The exact amount of all the consumables depends on the load and is very nicely mentioned in the instruction manual. Next up is the detergent. So for inserting the detergent, that is how the tray opens and you can insert the detergent as I'm showing you right now. Now, if you don't want to put all these three things separately, you can simply use this one single capsule which has all these three things integrated in one capsule itself, which is enclosed in a water soluble housing. A pack of 10 such capsules is available for 325 rupees. And as I've told you, all the necessary links will be below in the description. Now that we have the consumables in place, let's take a look at the operation and functioning of this machine. So here are the four modes this machine operates on. So the first mode is quick wash, which is at 45 degrees. I cannot press vario speed. So what vario speed does, we'll see in the eco mode. So right now I'm on the eco mode, which shows the machine will work for three hours, 15 minutes, but I just pressed the vario button and it switched it to one hour, 25 minutes. So that is what the vario speed does. It reduces the speed to almost half the time. Now let's go on to the auto mode. So this mode is the one I feel you will be using the most. And the last one is the intensive mode. So these modes have to be selected as per the load on the machine. These are the only four operational modes that the machine comes with. The power consumption of the machine will depend on the mode that you have selected, which can vary anywhere from 0.8 kilowatts to 1.45 kilowatts. You can also delay your wash time by pressing this button here. You can delay the wash anywhere from one hour to 24 hours. Now let's take a look at some more settings. So for those settings, you will have to press in the start button and then rotate the dial as I'm doing here. You see H, after that D, R and P. Now let's talk about what these letters stand for. So let's get back to H. So setting the H mode here will determine how much salt has to be consumed during a wash. You will have to set this as per the hardness of the water supply. The values in this mode range from H0 to H7. 
H7 will have to be used if the hardness of the water is too high. The next mode we have is D, which denotes intensive drying. So it has only two modes that is D0 and D1. So setting the machine to D1 will switch on the intensive drying mode. The next mode that we have is R. R stands for the amount of rinsate that has to be consumed in a cycle and you can vary it from R0 to R6. And the last and the final setting that we have here is P, which will ensure that the machine is switched off at the end of the program. So you will get two options, P1 and P2. P1 will switch off the machine after one minute and P2 will switch off the machine after 120 minutes. So well, those were all the modes and the settings you get on this machine. Now let's get into the most interesting part, that is the actual washing cycle. So before that, you will have to arrange your utensils. So the spikes on the bottom tray can be adjusted this way so that larger utensils can be placed properly. The arrangement of the utensils in the tray is really important, but not just the arrangement, the material of the utensils that we intend to put in has to be taken care of too. The vessels which I've arranged right now are stainless steel, so you can use stainless steel, glass, Tupperware, microwave safe plastic and proselene vessels in this machine. However, you cannot use cutlery and utensils made of wood, aluminium, certain antiques, copper, tin, silver and delicate decorative glass items. Generally, you will have to do the primary cleaning and take care of the leftover food on the plates before placing them inside. Now let's arrange the upper drawer, but before that, I'll show you how the drawer has to be removed. Yes, it can be removed for cleaning purposes and this is how easily you can remove the drawer out. So the removal and the insertion of the drawer is really very simple. I have to say that the overall design and the material quality used by Simmons is really top notch. So one thing to take care of here is, as you saw, most of the larger size utensils I have placed in the lower tray along with plates and the upper drawer especially for glasses, cups, bowls and other smaller things. I'll also be placing this aluminium vessel in this run and we'll be checking out if the metal gets damaged or no. But generally, as per the instructions, you cannot use aluminium vessels too, for the records. Once you've slided back the trays, you will have to rotate the fans and check if they don't have any hindrance of any sort. After checking all these things and inserting the consumables, we are good to go. The next thing we have to do is select the mode. So I've selected the auto mode and I'll press the vario speed option, which will reduce the speed. Once I've done that, I'll simply have to press start and the machine will start functioning. The three indicators here will light up if there is a shortage of water supply, salt or the rinsade. Safety has also been taken care of in this machine. So if accidentally you happen to open the machine while it's functioning, it will stop immediately. Let's do it again. And as you see there, the functioning will stop immediately. But definitely you will have to protect yourself from the steam coming out from the machine. Once the complete washing cycle has been finished, you can keep the door open a little bit so that the steam will escape. So we are done with the process now and let's check out our vessels. So the one thing you will observe immediately is the vessels are completely dry and a bit warm as well. So this is the vessel which was the most soiled one and you can see it has been cleaned completely. You will even find a nice shine on your vessels and you will appreciate the touch and feel because of the complete steam drying process. So this plate was completely oily and now you can see how clean it is. We had on purpose kept a glass the wrong way and you can see it has not been cleaned. So you'll have to arrange the vessels properly. This is a thing you should take care of. Now let's check out the aluminium vessel that we had kept. You will find a strange tint deposited on the vessels and we tried this multiple times and we can say that your aluminium and copper vessels can get really damaged if you use them in this machine. So we won't recommend you doing that. Apart from that, if you arrange your vessels properly and use the right vessels, this machine will do a fantastic job. Now comes the final part that is cleaning. So if you have to clean the fan, which we guess you will have to do once after 3 to 4 months, removing the fan was really simple and the fan is where the water comes in from. The fan also fits back in very easily. You don't have to spin it, just pressing it inside will fix it back in place. There you go. Similarly, you can remove the fan on the upper tray as well. Now this fan is attached with a knob. You can see the knob here, which will have to be rotated in order to remove it. The unique design of the nozzle sprays high intensive water jets inside the machine with the help of which the complete cleansing takes place. This unique design of the nozzles limits the water supply to 12 litres to 15 litres depending on the utensils load and the mode you have selected. The filter of the machine is one of the parts which will have to be cleaned regularly. So this is how easily you can remove it. You can even take out the micro filter as I did there. We will recommend you to wash this under a jet of water at least once in a week. Fitting it back inside is again very simple. You just have to place it properly and the marks have to be aligned. As you see there, 
Speaking of design, this machine is very nicely designed. The only downside on this machine is you cannot put extremely soiled vessels inside directly before washing them. Apart from that, the overall performance of the machine is really fantastic. I will definitely recommend this machine to all those who are planning to buy one. It will surely add a lot of sophistication and hygiene in your life. Well, that was my take on this dishwasher by Simmons. If you have any questions, do mention in the comment section below. If you have liked this video, definitely give it a huge thumbs up. If this was the first time you were watching my videos, do hop onto my channel, check out what I do. I make videos on all Indian consumer goods and services, and I even make weekly Tuesday vlogs. So if you like what I'm doing, do subscribe to my channel and be a part of the Indian consumer family. Remember to serve before you swipe, and if you don't need, you don't buy. This was Prasad Ved Pathak, your Indian consumer, signing off. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.